Welcome to Inside the Film Room. I'm Krista Nurgle. Today we'll talk men's and women's hoops, recap the games, and have a preview of the next. We start with head men's basketball coach Matt Figger. Coach, you went on the road and picked up two conference wins. The Govs defeated UT Martin. You were up by one with seven seconds left. Run me through those last seven seconds, picking up the sweep over the Skyhawks. Well, I, it's one of those deals. Uh, you know, you're on the road, you're, you're trying to get a stop. Um, you know that you got to keep the ball out of the paint, but you can't give up threes. Uh, it, there's a lot of things. It, luck comes into play a lot of times. It's just, uh, you know, you're, you're hoping that the kid misses a shot, you get the rebound, you go make your free throws, you get out of there with a win. Uh, I've been on both sides of it. Um, happy to win. Uh, been on the deflating side of it too. So it's uh, uh, games are unpredictable when it's like that. You, you, you're just leaving it up to the good man upstairs to hoping he's on your side tonight. And, you get a stop and you go win. So, and the locker rooms are always fun after those games. Now, Avery Ugba had back-to-back 28-point -back performances. What does it mean to have consistency like that on the floor? He's been giving us everything. Um, you know, he's a senior, so he knows that uh, his time is getting short um, as a college player, and so he leaves it out on the floor every single night. Now, whether it's scoring 28 points or getting 15 rebounds, uh, he knows what it's like to, to try to go out and win games. Against SEMO, you had 19 points off turnovers and 12 second chance points. You lead the conference in offensive rebounds. What do you preach about ball control? Oh, we just tell our guys every time the ball is shot, uh, go get opposite inside and go rebound it. Um, you know, and then when, once we get leads, you know, we want to be patient. We want to get the ball to the third side. We want to move it around. We want to get late in the shot clock. We want to make teams have to guard, and then hopefully at the end of the shot clock, we get the best shot for us. Murray State sits one game ahead of us in conference standings. What do you look to bring on the road at Murray? Well, we're just hoping we can keep bringing consistency. Uh, we've won two in a row on the road, and, and uh, you know they're a really good team, and we've got to be able to uh, do the things that, that brought us success, success last week, and that's uh, you know running good offense, you know keeping the ball out of the paint, limiting teams to one shot, you know attacking them on the other side of the floor. How do you go about slowing down Murray State's Jonathan Stark? Uh, we've got, I don't know if you do that, uh, we've got to get him to uh, shoot balls above his average. Uh, we can't give him clean looks. We've got to make him take tough shots. Uh, you know, good players like that, they always find a way to score. We just got to hopefully uh, make sure we can constantly disrupt him and make him take more shots than what he's normally taking. This will be your first contest against the Racers, but you've seen EIU already. What were you talk, taking away, rather, from your previous appearance against the Panthers in preparation for Saturday's game? Well, you know, right now our, our focus is Murray. And uh, once we get done with that, we'll turn the chapter to EIU. You know, it, it, it allows you, when you play a team already once, you see what worked, what didn't, what adjustments you need to make, uh, what they did to hurt you, and, and see if you can improve on that and go uh, win on the road. There are six games remaining in the regular season. A win Thursday would put you in a tie for second place. Do you talk to your team yet about what it would mean in the OVC tournament? You know, the top two seeds are automatic bids in the semifinals. Do you go through those scenarios yet? Not really. No, I mean, we're worried about the next opponent, the next game. Uh, all, that, all that stuff's nice, but you've got to take care of the next game in order to get to the next game. And, and so we'll, we'll worry about all that once the season's over. And, um, all we can do is control what's in front of us and win in the next game. That's the most important thing. All right, thanks, Coach. The Govs stay on the road and we'll head to Murray State on Thursday. Tip off is at 6 o'clock. Coming up, we'll visit with Coach David Midlick. Stay with us. Welcome back. I'm with head women's basketball coach David Midlick. Coach, your team picked up a conference win on the road this past Saturday. The team was able to come back strong after a tough loss against UT Martin. What was your message to the team between that one day break between games? Yeah, just have to keep going. Uh, it was just one game, win or lose. And I thought Friday the team had a great practice, great spirit, great energy about them. And I felt good about starting the game on Saturday against Southeast Missouri. After a string of second quarter struggles, you really shut Southeast Missouri down in the second period, outscoring the Red Hawks 24 to 12. How were you able to build on that crucial first half lead? Well, after the first period, I think we were down six, 15 to nine, but I thought we got some good shots and the shots just started falling in the second period. And I thought we pushed the, the tempo a little bit and getting up and down the floor uh, like we need to. We've been struggling scoring a little bit and we got some really good stops defensively. 
Brianne Alexander continues to be a force in conference play, posting a career-high 26 points. Looking back, how has her game evolved this season? First off, the team has done a good job finding her uh, underneath, both near the elbow and, and at the basket, and then she's kind of taken it from there. She was a beast in that game. She uh, took the ball to the goal, uh, got some foul, uh, drew some fouls, and uh, finished with her right and left hand around the basket. So her game has, has evolved, I think. And I hope she's gotten more confident that the team has looked for her for our scoring. Simo had no answers for the Govs on the glass as you out-rebounded the Red Hawks 41-29. What allowed you to be so effective in the rebounding game? We played a little bigger lineup. Uh, Kellen Canal and uh, Ari Varner played uh, a, a few more minutes than they usually did, but overall just a, a team effort on the glass to put our bodies on, on them and go get the basketball. And It showed I think the final rebounded margin was plus 12. And I have a lot of respect for Southeast Missouri and, and Coach Patterson and, and her team and what they do and they were coming off a, a big win over Murray so the team committed to rebounding and uh, they made it happen. It's rivalry week as the governors head to Murray State Thursday for the Heritage Bank Battle of the Border. Is there any added pressure ahead of a matchup like this? Well they are a rival school uh, so you, you do want to beat your rival. Right. I think both you know I think Murray State would say that as well but no uh, we have to prepare uh, for three weeks left in the conference season and you're fighting for positioning, you're fighting to make the tournament. If you make the tournament, you want to be a higher seed. Uh, so I think our players are staying in the moment and trying to get better each day and preparing for Murray, but also kind of understand the big picture. Murray State has struggled in OVC play, but the Racers have picked up five wins at home. What will be the keys to getting a win on the road? Murray State is extremely talented. Uh, Keyshawn and James is a player that will vie for OVC Conference Player of the Year honors. Uh, and they're athletic, uh, they're aggressive, they play well at home by, by what you just said. Uh, I, I think the main key is going to be the tempo of the game. We can't let them you know, get some momentum and, and, and feel good about getting up and down the floor and, and racing up and down. And we've got to we've got to understand when those moments happen in the game. We've got to get a good possession on offense and move the basketball around, or maybe on the defensive end change the defense up or put a little different pressure on one of their players uh, to kind of change the tempo. The Govs will make the trek to Eastern Illinois on Saturday. How crucial is it to pick up a season sweep against the Panthers? Well, it just goes back to answering the last question. You know, every game is important when you just have six conference games left. So, you know, our focus right now is on nothing but Murray State. But as soon as that game is over, when I when I get on the bus, I'll talk with the coaches about Eastern Illinois, and we'll put a, a game plan together for them on Friday and, and be ready to go on Saturday. The Panthers' only two wins have come at home this season. What will be your defensive scheme to disrupt the EIU offense? Yeah, the first thing that comes to mind with Eastern Illinois is their motion offense. Uh, they, uh, they have five players that are kind of are on the perimeter that can shoot it and can also drive to the basket. And if you aren't, uh, aren't in a stance on defense and aren't aware of what's going on away from the basketball, it's going to make you look silly. So. Uh, I know when we when we prepare on that Friday for Saturday's game, uh, we're going to have to uh, to worry about a, a really good motion offense team. The Govs are sitting comfortably in sixth place in the OVC standings. What can this team do to make a final push in those last six games of regular season? Yeah, I think it's take it one day at a time again. You know, when we go out to practice today, we're going to prepare, uh, put in our defensive game plan for Murray State. We put in our offensive game plan yesterday and, and try to, uh, to get better each day. We want to be better on Thursday than we were last Saturday. Thanks, Coach. Next up, we go one-on-one -on -one with Keisha Gregory, guard for the Govs. Welcome back. This is Keisha Gregory. Keisha, your mark was all over the stat sheet against Southeast Missouri, picking up two steals, three assists, eight points against the Red Hawks. How have you been able to develop such a versatile style of play? Well, in practice, Coach Midlick just kind of tells us what to do and rebound, and I just try to do everything what he wants to do. Just try to execute. That's yeah. right. You suffered a shoulder injury, though, against Ball State in the final game of non-conference season. How were you able to bounce back from that? Well, it was right before Christmas break, so I had some rest, and I just had to be back in the gym and shoot more. I had to get used to the brace and just had to play through it. Did it feel different at first? Yeah, it did, for sure. But now you feel you've... Yeah, I'm trying to work it back in, yeah. You are leading the team in rebounds and averaging 9.3 points per game. What makes you so effective on both ends of the floor? Well, 
Coach Midlick, as a team, he wants us to rebound and be able to score both. Um, he wants us to be effective on the defensive end, and I just try to show that we can do both. I can be a scorer and be a de defensive player. As a junior this year, how has your role changed on and off the court? I definitely had to become a leader, and it's different for me to do that because I wasn't really talkative last year or my freshman year, but now I had to become a more talkative player on and off the court. Your team is currently in sixth place in the conference standings. What are the keys to getting wins in that final regular season games going into the OVC tournament? Um, I think we just had to stay together and just play the game of basketball like how we know how to play. All right, thanks so much. Both teams travel to Murray State on Thursday. The women tip off at 3 o'clock. And the men will follow that matchup at 6 o'clock on CBS Sports Network. You can follow updates on our social media sites at Austin P. WBB and Austin P. MBB. Thanks so much for watching Inside the Film Room. I'm Chris Nurgle. We'll see you next time.